So we are going to start here. And we're just going to bring up and push and back down. And then we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to switch the direction of the grip. So now it's more of a curl. But what changes really is this part up here. You should feel that in your wrist if you hold on a little too tight. So feel free to have a relaxed grip um, when you're pushing up. Now, again, in the original grip, into the back of your neck, and we're going to press from here. Back to the front, again with our grip this way, so our palms facing back if we're, if our arms are all the way down, come to chest tight, keep your elbows um, out, don't drop them, and push forward. I think you're doing a bench press, but you're standing. Okay, from here, I'm going to bring it just about to through the top of the shoulder, beginning of the neck. Bring it all the way to one side. And that rest you on your body, as well as if we put it to the other side. Do as many as you can. I did a lot of upper body work at the gym yesterday, so try to hit your 10 if you can. From here, going behind the back, palms facing away from the body, our hands just inside our shoulders. Um, so you don't want to be out here, be in here, and in the middle, and without resting the bar on the body. You want to bring it up. Hey. Take the stick in the middle, in your right hand, 
just bring it up nice and gentle. We don't want to be swinging too much. Make sure to keep your core nice and engaged and your back, and that'll lose some of the wobble. Once you've got your 10, switch over to the other side. Okay, the thing we did a little more explosively in front of the body. We're now going to do behind the body. But again, you don't want it uh, resting. You want it off your shoulders and your neck. And a little more explosive. Get your 10. So we're gonna build in an assisted stretch here. You want to put this behind your back and get it under your elbows. You're here. Now keeping tension with, with your arms, push your chest through. And sort of maintain that and you should get a little bit of stretch as if you're trying to put your shoulder blades together. And to add a little something to it, really do tense the bar into your back. You want to get it a little higher, even put your arms out on here and do the same exercise. You got a little bit more pull in the pec and you'll feel a little bit more uh, between your shoulder blades. So you're essentially just trying to squeeze the bar forward with your hands and down a little bit with your shoulder blades while pushing your chest forward. Just hold that for a minute. If it hurts, relax. You can always do it more than once. If you don't need to work it out in your shoulders, you can do that too. Okay. If you're done with that, I'm going to take this forward a little. I want you to, leaving it forward in front of you, hinge at the hip and go down. Bend your knees a little if you want. Try not to round out your back. Then come back up. We're trying to keep the same shape with our chest and arms. Just lean it forward and down. 
You want to try to make sure you roll your arms, your shoulders down for this, not up. So you're, if you do this type of lifting, this is essentially uh, like a good morning. You can come back up uh, driving from the hip hinge and pulling your hips forward. And you can feel some of that here in the small of your back. You might need to keep your core uh, engaged for this. And so you might feel a little bit uh, in your core as well. Okay. I want you to, once again, put the stick behind you. And now you do want it to be resting on you. And you're not um, trying to keep it off your back. You are resting on it now. And from here, I just want you to lean. This is sideways. Okay. So with your feet uh, sort of just underneath your hips, or if you feel comfortable with it, your feet together, just stretching out your sides a little and strengthening those legs. Again, you're welcome to go down on one side, come to neutral, make sure you have your balance, and go back down. Or you can make it a fluid motion and stabilize it with your hips. From the same position, okay, we're now going to bring the right side to the left knee almost, down, keep your knees bent, do not lock them out. Feel free to come up into this upright position each time. We're not going down too far, we're just rotating the stick around. You'll probably find that one of your sides is a little bit more flexible than the other. That's normal. This kind of exercise will hopefully help you even that out. And that flexibility might not be in the oblique that's missing, it can be in the hip, it can be in the hip flexor, and it can all be in the knee. So that brings us to our first break. Uh, take a few minutes and get some water. I'm going to keep going now. We're going to do a series here of things that are very similar. So if at any point, Due to the similarity, you can feel those muscles starting to freak out a little bit. Feel free to be uh, easy on yourself, not go too hard. So we're going to grip with our right hand and our left hand facing in the same direction. Okay, See so our thumbs go in the same direction each time. And we're going to be following the way our thumbs are pointed. And so what we're going to do by bringing um, the side that is uh, sort of at the back, if we will, if we're following our thumbs this way, we're going to bring that one through here like this and then back down. This is partially pull, partially push, so you're doing both.
you've done 10 on that side, switch your grip. So again, the thumbs are pointing in the same direction, now the opposite direction. And do it on the other side. When you've done that, you're going to grab the stick so that your hands are now facing in opposite directions with the thumbs inwards towards each other. And now we're going to swing the stick um, laterally, so this way. But we're going to do it a little bit away from the body, and we're not going to bend an arm. You're just going to keep your arms. Nice and straight, as best you can. Get a little bit of a body moving here. And if you can build it up a little bit more as you go, that's fantastic. Just try not to let your arms uh, bend more than just a little bit. Okay. This can also be done this way, uh, but we're going to skip that for today. So now what we're going to do is go behind us. So again, our thumbs are pointing the same direction. And we're going to push and pull in the direction of the thumb and try to bring it up uh, so it is almost vertical uh, next to us. Keep in mind we are bending the elbow this time. keeping the other arm uh, as extended as possible. When you've done that on the one side, switch to the other side and do it again. Okay, now well, we've done that, we're going to, now with our thumbs facing out on both sides, keeping our shoulders rolled down, don't let them fly out too much. We're going to do the same exercise we did at the front, and with straight arms, just like you're telling yourself off, I guess. Again, you want to do this motion as best you can without bending the elbows too much. Uh, the aim is to reach a point where we can, with a straight arm, get to here on this side. That requires us to straight arm pretty far back. Um, and that is limited by the size of your back musculature and the flexibility right around your shoulder blades. See if I can get this one to work for me. All right. 
we're going to be passing the stick around us. Okay, so in the front action, we pass the stick here in the middle, drop the tip so our hand is now pointing down, and then you will bring it around, bring it up, pass it through, bring it down, pass it behind, bring it up, pass it through. whole time trying not to let anything lean on the body and try to stay upright on like leaning over like what I just did. This will be as much a coordination question at first as a strength question. Now, if you feel comfortable, do another five, but this time, do it a little bit more oomph in the pass. So you're not handing it off, you're throwing it off. And that's true at the front as well. If you're tossing it, you're tossing it. Okay. Now with the slow controlled version, we're gonna go the other way. Then, if you feel like you've done your five to 10 that way, now I'm still going the new direction. We're going to throw it. And you can do that throw as far or as not far as you are comfortable with. Working to the point where we're hoping we can throw it from one side of the body to the other, but I am not there yet at the back. Okay. All right. So now, take the stick, push it up above yourself, and rotate at the core without letting this wall keep it nice and steady above your head in the same position the whole time. A lot of these are about stabilized muscles, including this one. So if you feel like you can do this a little faster or a little more rotational, in which case feel free to um, come off the toe a little bit and rotate on the bottom half as well so you get a nice full rotation. Just make sure that your arms stay in position above the head. And that relax, switch grip. So you have one hand over, one hand under. And then without touching the body, we're gonna do the same rotation down here. And again, we want the position of the bar relative to our chest not to change. So we don't want the fourth arm to come around like this. We want it to stay where it is. Okay, and I want you to switch grip and do it again. Be careful again not to rest on the body and not to let the arms go wild. Rather, to keep it nice in front of us. For those of you who have done my Montante class, this should feel uh, familiar. Okay, when you've done that, we're going to do it behind us. Again, with our palms facing opposite directions.
try not to um, let your shoulders rise as you do that. Keep them rolled through and engaged and so that your back and your core can remain engaged during all of this and you're not doing it all uh, through that shoulder joint. You've done that. Switch your grip again and do it again. Okay, we should have two more now before we take another break. So just get through these. Over under grip in the middle. And then gently rotate. You've done that. Switch your grip and do it again. Now, thing to keep in mind here is not to let it rest on your body while you're doing this, but rather keep it at nice and extension, slightly bent elbows, so that your uh, upper arm is not resting on the body. And if you keep your core engaged as well as your back. You should prevent the ceiling, like you need to lean back to keep your arms forward. Well, apparently my headphones just died, so if the sound quality changes, I apologize. So, as we did last week as well, and opposite of each other, one in the middle, the left hand in the middle, the bottom hand in the middle body, the left small body across, as before. The left hand is just to stabilize. It should not be resting sort of on your torso. It should be out in front. Rotating a bit. So get those 10 much so done that you can. My shoulder's starting to give. And then switch hands. Your other hand should be out in front of you, away from your body, and then take the other way. Uh, try to avoid what I just did. Don't need it. Rotate into it. See why you stay uh, nice and upright while you're doing this. If you're starting to lean, and that form is starting to go, that's usually just an indication uh, that that part of your body is done for now. So finish up those 10 uh, and then uh, come back. We're gonna take five. We're all ready for 15 minutes of uh, calisthenic leg day. Um, we're going to start taking the stick, either resting it here, we're resting it here, whatever is more comfortable for you. Um, and put your feet directly underneath your hips. I'm just going to do some calf raises. Now the trick here is to go up slowly, make them down slowly. Up. Yeah. What you don't want is to bounce up 
to fall. Okay, some of you may feel the need to turn your feet out a little bit. That's also good. Up and down. Gently. Now, here the stabilizer muscles come in here as well, mostly so that you don't do this and throw off your balance. You just want to rise up well on the balls of your feet. If you want to add some difficulty to this, feel free to do a pause at the top. And then up, hold it. If you have stairs nearby, feel free to do this off the set of stairs as well. So just your balls and your feet are on the stair and sink down past the flat position. Okay. Do a few more of those. And now take a wider stance. And we'll turn your feet out ever so slightly. The staff above your head. And as you lean into one side of the knee, bring your body to the other side. Okay. Without locking your knees out at the top or the bottom. Just as far as you're comfortable. If you want to get a little bit more hip flexor in, turn the legs out a little bit more. Or take a wider stance. And just counterbalance that motion. That's good. If all of this feels nice and dandy, make it smoother. Okay. Now, this one is going to be potentially a little rough. So do it in a manner that you are capable of. We are going to do a calf squat variation. You can bring your feet together. And then for now, if you need it, Balance yourself with a stick in front of you. Roll up onto the balls of your feet. Go down parallel and come back up while never leaving um, the balls of your feet. So again, onto the balls of your feet. Squat and come up. All while staying on the ball of your foot. Use this to stabilize yourself. If you feel like your balance is good enough, lay one end of the staff uh, on your shoulder and hold it out. Decrease the difficulty by counterbalancing better. Increase the difficulty by you're on the balls of your toe. Squat. So, however, you feel the need to balance that. Okay, we'll do a few more of those. You need to throw an arm out to help balance yourself. Feel free to do that as well. Uh, that can be done dynamically as well. Now, move at a pace that's comfortable. Go to a depth that's comfortable. And remember to stay up on your toes. It's much more of a calf than it is a quad workout as if you were doing uh, a standard squat. Okay. This next one, if you were doing it uh, in a modern gym, would be a Bulgarian split squat. Okay. You have your foot on something. 
and then you would squat down. But this is calisthenics, so we're not resting our foot. Taking the stick to the side where we are lifting the foot, okay, and then going down. Now, go down as far as you can. The end goal is to let our knee touch the ground. I can't do that yet. But that's a time. Try not to lean forward too much. Move the knee back, come up. If you can do this, then next step, not to balance yourself. You'd rather have the weight there. Or if you're feeling particularly adventurous, here. My suggestion is turn the foot that's standing slightly outwards, not directly in line forwards. Do it in your Also, try not to let your heel come off the ground on this one. This one will work with dorsal flexion. Done it on one side a few times. Go through the switch. Again. We all have a stronger and a weaker side and a stronger and weaker balance side. Normally our dominant side is what we can talk about. So you lean backwards more onto your heel. It often gives you more stability. I as you can, and you can balance out. Are you all doing all right? Yes? Okay. Another one we did last time. Stick in front of us. Feet together. And push. Close out, yes. Slowly walk across. Then walk ourselves back up. Now, the difficulty variations here are how far out you go and whether or not you use the stick to balance. If you're not using the stick to balance, hold it here, hold it against the small of your back. That'll prevent you from being forward. Keep your balance above your feet. So that you're putting weight in the face of the balance. Now, you may not feel stretch in this, but for a lot of flexibility that's done with body weight. You will feel a loss of strength before you reach the point. That's the purpose of this exercise. Find that point. Starting to be able to feel the stretch here, especially if I'm not pushing my back out, but rather um, tucking my tail between my legs. So to speak, that's a good visual. Or John says, bring junk forward. Balance and keep that pelvis up. Time work. Pelvis forward. Now, um, 
to some degree, whether you're using your toes to push yourself up, um, or you're using the rotation of your heels to do it, making it just try to stay reasonably flat footed. Standing on the toe. You can step in. You should be able to do this. You can do flat. And take care of your knees. This kind of rotational strain on the knees is a lot. Okay. I'm going to do the foot swinging drill now. Last week, Position we are swinging the opposite side, balance aid, we can go up, or we can go out, to the side, 45 degrees back, straight back, but keeping ourselves as upright as we can. If we can, in that set of five, if you watch my foot, not putting the foot down. Ideally, at some point, without using this. Now, difficulty levels choose your poison. Either keep the stick down, keep the foot down, or feel free to bring the stick up. Balance nicely weighted up the foot. Again, for these balance exercises. I suggest also turning your foot out because you can balance on. See, yeah, a little bit more control, a little less swing. Again, there's also a question of what you're trying to do here. It's just the balance and getting that leg moving a little bit it's free to get keep the movement a little smaller, build some of that strength. Or if you want to build a little bit more flexibility, look at swinging that leg with the balance. So you have a little bit more balance. A little bit more flexibility around the picture. So now switch. Changes a little bit the higher with the individual flexibility in all the directions. Pause the foot down. Pull in that motion. My left knee is particularly unbalanced, so the more Balance oriented version of this, like this. Struggle. Right, make sure you're planted in your heel when you're doing this. Maybe that's like this. Okay. Ideally, or else not lock that many. Leg is harder. Okay, friends, uh, this has not been an easy set of exercises, but I do believe that we will leave it there.